Todd, newly uncovered emails show Education Secretary Miguel Cardona may have actually helped drum up the infamous letter from the National School Board Association, which compared protesting parents to domestic terrorists. Here to react, Sean Duffy, former Wisconsin Congressman and Fox News contributor. Sean, this is the uh, email right here that has Republicans all fired up this morning. It's from the NSBA secretary treasurer to another member of the organization, and she says the NSBA was writing a letter to provide information to the White House uh, from a request by Secretary Cardona. What do you make of the situation? Well, uh, listen, it's frightening, Carly. Number one, because this plan was hatched in the White House. Democrats believe that they can suppress their opposition, which, by the way, is parents, right? Everyone is a parent. But stop parents from going out and protesting CRT. The plan was hatched in the White House. It, didn't, it wasn't planned as the school board association, um, which, as I, I, I think, in and of itself is frightening. But then again, Democrats want to use the power of government to suppress their opposition. And so I think this is shocking. But it doesn't surprise me. Um, and again, I think the politics that have uh, taken place over the last year with regard to Democrats and how they'll use, and I, by the way, actually over the, over the Trump administration, how they'll use the power of government uh, to, uh, to, to accomplish their goals is, mm. is shocking. And I think it's just a wave of the future, Carly. Yeah, well, the Department of Education now released a statement on this. They say, they say, while the secretary did not solicit a letter from NSBA to understand the views and concerns of stakeholders, the department routinely engages with students, teachers, parents, district leaders, and education associations. So right. they're denying it, but it sounds so like uh, you're not buying it. So, Carly, what that says is, yes, of course, we talked to everybody, but we did talk to them specifically about calling parents racist. And by the way, when I was in Congress, um, I did town halls. People came and they were pretty rowdy, especially in the more liberal parts of my district, right? They spoke their mind. They wanted to tell the representative what they thought. And by the way, I took the job and I had to take the heat. And uh, the school boards, if you're going to teach CRT, should be able to hear from parents. But to call them terrorists, to call them violent, we all watched the protests. There was nothing of the kind that took place at those meetings. And so, again, to you use a, a term like you're a domestic terrorist for parents is is uh, unconscionable. Yeah. And the fact that the FBI or, uh, you know, the FBI went along with it and said uh, the DOJ went along with it and said that, you know, the FBI That's is right. going to go ahead and investigate some of these parents. Got to get to President Biden's speech in Georgia yesterday he, um, to drum up support for election reform. He said that he doesn't want the filibuster to stand anymore. Take a listen to more of his comments here from yesterday. History has never been kind to those who've sided with voter suppression over voters' rights. So I ask every elected official in America, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be the on the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? This is the moment to decide. And Sean, he says this issue marks a turning point in our country. What do you say? Well, nor normally, Carly, it, it, through our history, that if people have been denied the right to vote, they would take to the streets and they would march. And that was a good thing, to make sure they did have the right to vote, because they were disenfranchised. I would ask you, who's been disenfranchised? Where are the marches? Who hasn't been able to vote because of yeah. this voting law, because people are required to show an ID? No one has been disenfranchised. This is a created issue, right? Democrats and Republicans, black, white, brown, everybody has agreed that you show an ID uh, to vote. No one objects to that, except Joe Biden and Democrats who want to have a consolidation of power in the federal government. I just, just I think this is interesting. If I go to New York City and I want to go to a restaurant, um, I, I got to show my ID to, the, to the, the restaurant or the store that I want to go into because they want to make sure that when I show my Vax card that it's not Todd Pyro's card and Sean Duffy going in. <laughs> so they make me show an ID to match the card with my ID. Why can't we do that for voting? If you want to do that so I can eat in a restaurant, they should let me do that to make sure I vote. Voting is more sacred than eating in a, in a New York restaurant. And confirming that what I'm, I'm Sean Duffy voting and not Tad Pyro is just as important to show that I'm, 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 I'm unvaxxed Sean Duffy versus vaxxed Todd Pyro, whatever. Um, yeah. Insanity. It, it's an unbelievable statement for you know, President Biden to accuse Republicans of racism because they don't want to federalize election laws. That's where he stands. Sean, you just uh, stated how you stand as well. Thank you for joining us this morning.